All right, so I recently did a video on load development. And in that video, I showed how I go about my process of developing a load. Now, in that video, we developed a load for ELR shooting. Now, that's not necessarily the exact same way. Um, all the methods and processes are the same, but it's not necessarily the exact same tactics that I'm going to use for developing a load for something like a match. Um, in that, I'm not going to necessarily start with the highest uh, range of charge weights and worry about getting the most velocity. Obviously, I'm going to be worrying about the most accuracy. Um, but one of the things I wanted to talk about in that video, and I just knew that there wasn't going to be enough time, and I figured also getting into developing loads is going to put us into a whole nother section of videos that we can do um, and put a lot of focus on too, because I, I feel that um, getting a good load developed uh, for whatever type of shooting you're doing um, is probably one of the things that is going to uh, give you the most success. Um, you, if you don't have a load that is capable of performing to the standards that you need them to perform to for whatever task you're trying to do, then you're not going to be successful at what you're trying to do. So I think load development, um, if you're a hand loader, is one of the absolute most important things there is um, for being successful at precision shooting of any type. Um, now, obviously, if you're not a hand loader, you can still search through different match loads, match factory ammo, and find the one that's going to work the best for you. But obviously, if you're a hand loader, you're going to be able to really fine tune that load to your rifle. And so one of the things I wanted to talk about in that video, and I really didn't get around to it because I knew I just didn't have enough time, um, was the fact that powder selection, how important powder selection is um, for whatever you are, whatever you plan to do. Um, so you may pick a different powder for different types of shooting. Um, so a lot of times you'll see somebody, um, they'll get a rifle, they'll get brass, and they'll pick out a bullet that they want to shoot, and they'll say, and I'm going to run this powder. Well, that's all well and good, but how do you know that that's the best powder for the task that you are, the task that you are Attend, intending to do, whether that's long range precision shooting, whether that's bench shooting, whatever it may be, um, there's different powders that may suit whatever you, your need is the, the you know, pro more properly. So that's what I want to talk about in this video. So I just want to do a little quick demonstration. So um, this is my six Creed more, my, my uh, Savage 12 FV build here. Um, you guys have seen it numerous times, many videos with this rifle. Um, and I've got a lot of different loads worked up for this rifle. Now, in that last video, we were developing a load with the 110 Match King for this rifle. Um, so I didn't want to use that for this video. I went ahead and picked a bullet that I haven't even messed with any load development uh, for this barrel since I did the barrel, the last barrel swap on this. Um, I have not shot any of the 108 ELD. So that's the, the bullet that I picked for this just to show from the ground up something that I would do before I even started my load development process. So um, for this video, we're going to use the I just have this out here as another example of a powder that you can use for six creed more um, But for this video, we're going to be looking at I'm going to load two three-shot groups So one the h48 or h4350 which is the same powder that we used uh, in that last video for in load development um, And the other is h4831 shortcut So both of these are great powders for six millimeter creed more and various other things as well um, and both of them depending on your barrel, depending on, and each barrel is different. That's another thing I want to kind of stress here is that each barrel is different. Um, just because something shot fantastic in your last barrel, this, I've had many different barrels on this Six Creed more. I've burned out many barrels on this thing, and each one of them likes something a little bit different. And this, the same load that I loaded up for my last barrel is never um, the perfect load for my next barrel. So. This site may be something, something you're going to want to test every time you do a barrel swap. So we're going to load up three shot group or two three shots of each. So 40, 4831 shortcut and 4350. We're going to shoot two three shot groups. We're going to look at our chronograph speeds and our group size. And we're going to come back and talk about it. So check this out.
All right, so there you go. As you see, there's a lot of differences here. So depending on what I would, depending on what I'm trying to develop this load for. Now, obviously, um, most of the shooting that I do is long range precision. So one of the main concerns of mine is consistent velocities. Now, right off the bat, you notice with the H4350 load, um, I did not get anywhere near as good a group. Um, now, this is just thrown together. I took a random charge weight that was at the top of the pressure curve for both of these and a random seating depth, which was actually whatever my die was already set to for the 110 Match King. So this is not indicative of a load that's been developed at all. This is the very beginning before I would even start developing a load. Um, so with the 108 ELD, I had a feeling that that wasn't going to be those charge weights and those that seating depth was not going to be um, exactly where I needed to be for either of these. But you'll see some glaring differences. So the one that had very consistent velocities, so we had a 12 foot per second velocity spread on the H4350, but the group size is just under an inch. Now, obviously we can develop that, we can adjust our charge weights, we can adjust our seating depth, and we'll, we can probably shrink that down significantly. Um, but right off the bat, you'll notice that the 4831 shortcut, even though the velocities were all over the place, the velocities on that were almost 40 feet per second velocity swing. Um, and the group was one tiny little hole, um, sub quarter MOA without doing any load development. So if I was going to be developing this load for say 100 yard bench shooting, I'm probably going to start out working with the 4831 shortcut because right off the bat, without doing any sort of load development, I see that I'm getting tiny little groups and I can not be not worrying about my drops at distance um, with long range shooting. Um, I'm probably going to develop that load and get these things down to super little tiny itty bitty groups. Um, whereas the 4350, probably not going to be able to get those same super tenth of an inch groups out of the 4350 load. But what I'm going to be able to get is significantly more consistent velocities right off the bat. So I should be able to develop this load into something that shoots three tenths, quarter MOA, um, and has really consistent velocities. Whereas if I'm doing bench rest shooting and I'm worrying about the tiniest group, I'm probably going to start with the 4831 shortcut. So just something for you guys to think about. Um, another thing, obviously there are so many different things when it comes to load development um, that can help us achieve our results and this is one of the things that I've kind of noticed over the years um, that is a big factor and something that I typically concentrate on when I'm starting from scratch with a new load. So hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope this was helpful. See you guys next time. I'm out.